Individual sports offer us a real depth and honesty about the players, and it's always interesting to hear their side of the story, especially in the UFC, where there aren't any PR officers holding them back, and they tend to go raw and honest. This time, it's Leon Edwards, who gave us a whole new perspective about his win against Nate Diaz in UFC 263. Let's see what he has to say about it. First up, I got bored, Leon Edwards. Talking on the latest Block Party podcast, Leon Edwards opened up about his fight last year against Nate Diaz and revealed something that might not sit right with Diaz. The British MMA fighter explained that during their bout in the UFC 263 and that meant his levels dropped during round four, in particular. Edwards pointed out that the reason he got hit by a late one from Diaz was his boredom rather than Diaz's skill, and he'd just gotten too used to dominating the American and his concentration levels dropped because it was a one-sided bout. Ouch! That's gonna sting Diaz as much as one of the many flush punches he caught during the bout. He added a lot more insult to injury by saying that Diaz was getting schooled for 24 minutes and the fight was so easy that Edwards was bored. We actually don't disagree with Edwards here. He was on another level that night and his opponent couldn't get close to him, but that shouldn't be an excuse for your concentration levels to fall because he was, indeed, lucky that it didn't result in a potential KO. Edwards said that if he had landed in the first or second round, he would have managed to duck or avoid it, in one way or another, but the longer the fight went on, the more bored he was and just wanted to see out the round. This is quite common among wrestlers especially, when they know they're winning and have the upper hand, but it's not good news for Edwards because it seems like he has a weakness now. Now for the context. So if you've somehow forgotten the UFC 263 clash between Edwards and Diaz, not to worry, we've got you covered. It was actually as one-sided as it could possibly get. In fact, the only surprise was Diaz's resolve of hanging in there until the very end, despite getting dominated from the get-go. The American got the opportunity to steal the fight when he landed a deadly blow to Edwards, but it was just not lethal enough to be a KO. Credit to Edwards for hanging on because Diaz's strike definitely rocked him, and he was wobbling on his feet. However, he recovered swiftly, and his four takedowns were enough to get him a unanimous decision win in the welterweight clash. We can't help but imagine that if that blow had taken place in the middle or the start of the round, Diaz could have had the opportunity to double down on Edwards and steal a win with a literal sucker punch. But as it turns out, that wasn't the case. Edwards reigned supreme on the night and was the deserved winner of the UFC 263 event, but that late strike lives on in his memory. And it's good because he can use this minor setback to improve his game and try to increase his concentration levels because he won't get this lucky every time. So what's next for Rocky? Edwards has been in glorious form recently, and his win against Diaz was just one of the nine he'd managed to string together, and as a result, he's landed a shot at the title against Kamara Usman. This one will definitely be the toughest of his career so far, and it's the biggest challenge without a doubt. But that gives him all the more reason to produce something special, and we've got no doubts that he'll manage to do just that. Of course, we can't say that he'll definitely win. In fact, Kamara Usman will be a heavy favorite going into this one, but it's going to be really close. At least we hope so. We want to see a close fight. We're tired of the one-sided fights, especially in the welterweight. The 30-year-old will be hoping to record the biggest win of his career on the 20th of August in UFC 278. A mini blow, however, for Edwards in the fact that he couldn't get the title shot in his home soil in England. He revealed that there was potential plans for shifting it to O2 Arena for a pay-per-view, but it would have needed to be at 4 a.m. in the morning, and that's definitely not doable. As it happens, Edwards will have to do it in Texas. Nate Diaz, on the other hand, well, the less said the better. He's struggling a lot, and it seems that he won't be landing a fight against a proper UFC fighter anytime soon. In fact, things have gotten so bad for the American that Dana White actually suggested a fight against Jake Paul, and he meant it as a jibe. Now, in other news, Adesanya admits Whitaker is a great fighter. Israel Adesanya is one of the best fighters in the UFC, and everyone wants to get a piece of him. Not many can say that they've been in the ring with Adesanya, and managed to come out holding their hand high. Robert Whitaker, however, was one of the few who got two shots against Adesanya, but sadly for the Australian MMA, he couldn't register a win. Speaking to the media, Adesanya revealed that he respects Whitaker's craft and recognizes his talent. He explained how Whitaker is a great fighter, but at the same time, he's got no plans of running it back for the third time against the Australian. Adesanya added that he knows how that book ends, meaning that he's got no doubt that he'd beat him again. So there's no point in proving it for the third time. In fact, he's already set his sights on a new target, and that seems to be Jared Karanir at the UFC 276. The reigning middleweight champion elaborated that he's excited about the prospect of facing Cannoneer because he's new blood, and he's someone that he's never fought before. So it'll be a new challenge, we can't lie. We're also very excited about this fight because Cannoneer seems to be in some form. Next, Dana White on Volkanovski's goals. Alexander Volkanovski has made it as clear as possible that he wants to move up to 155 and take a shot at a second belt. Of course, he'll have to defeat Max Holloway in UFC 276 to assert his authority over such a claim. But to land that potential fight, he still needs that approval of UFC's main man, Dana White. So what does Dana White think about Volka's goals of moving up a division? He's not usually in favor of super fights, but it turns out that he'd be willing to make an exception for Volkanovski, considering he's more than deserved a shot at a second title. Talking to the Mac Life, Dana explained how the Australian had managed to earn the respect of everybody within and around the UFC circle, and that's why it makes complete sense for him to go for the 155 weight and try his luck in that division. However, Dana had the same plan for Volka and said that it's better that he faces Holloway first and completes the trilogy, putting it behind him, so this would be a closed chapter 
and no one could talk about it again. And provided that Volca does win, Dana believes that he can do whatever he wants to do, and Dana will be down for whatever Volca wants. Sounds promising. Just a small matter of disposing of Holloway then. But it's not sarcasm. The way Volca's been against Holloway, there's no reason why he shouldn't make light work of the American in their third fight. Finally, Makachev Oliveira. Could it happen? That's the biggest question, isn't it? We've all been waiting for something concrete in this fight, and every day we hope to get some news from the UFC confirming this mega fight. Charles Oliveira and Islam Makachev are two very close matched individuals, and both have had a lot of success in their recent bouts. It makes complete sense to set up a potential clash between the two, but there are many issues that aren't allowing the fight to go ahead. The biggest one comes from Oliveira himself, who thinks that Makachev still needs to prove himself a lot more to be able to compete with him. And he's not entirely wrong, but the way Makachev has beaten his opponents, it's the closest we've seen of Khabib and he definitely deserves a big fight. Who better than Charles Oliveira? We don't have any doubts that the UFC would also be interested in making it happen, but they've got a major problem with Oliveira. Yes, we don't need to explain the weight fiasco involving Oliveira, and the reason why he didn't get the lightweight belt despite winning the title fight. So it makes sense that Dubronx is looking for a fight to land the belt before he takes on Islam Makachev, who could improve his chances by beating a big name in the meantime. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Leon Edwards can beat Kamara Usman in the title fight? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!